regreso aquí en Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y como siempre estamos aquí en la cabina con el DJ Cafa, gracias por toda la ayuda ahí en la producción del show. Eh, y todo lo que estamos, de todos los temas que estamos hablando están eh, publicados en nuestra página de Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060 y los videos y todo el resto de la producción lo pueden ver en el canal de YouTube, Auto 060 en YouTube. Y eh, bueno, como les decía, estuvimos en, eh, hace una semana en eh, California, en el sur de San Francisco, probando la nueva Land Rover Range Rover Sport 2014, que es el modelo más vendido de la, de la firma británica y realmente es espectacular. Eh, se compara, o por lo menos ellos mismos lo, lo dicen, que compara con la Porsche eh, Cayenne, eh, con la Mercedes-Benz ML, pero en realidad, para mi gusto... Eh, la Range Rover Sport está en una categoría aparte porque no solamente es una SUV de super lujo, sino que además tiene una capacidad off-road impresionante. Eh, como les decía, hemos eh, publicado ya un par de videos ahí sobre una prueba del test drive off-road de la Range Rover Sport, pero para hablar todos los detalles, para conocer todos los detalles de este modelo, vamos a hablar con Simon Turner, que es el eh, Product Manager de Land Rover USA eh, para la nueva Range Rover Sport 2014. Well, Simon, after um, a typical Land Rover event, a lot of driving, but a lot of good driving, exciting, and both on the roads and especially off-road. I mean, it's this, this, you guys keep surprising everybody with what you can do with the cars. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've worked hard to really uh, improve the breadth of capability of the car, so we've not just been working at making Land Rovers better off-road. We've really pushed the envelope with the new Range Rover Sport, and we've tried to extend its span of ability and really improve the dynamics on road. And that's the real revelation with this car. It can still do all of the fantastic off-road things that a Range Rover can do, but it's much, much, much dynamically better on road too. Yeah, and this is what the third product in uh, less than two years, right? I mean, you guys are in a roll. Yes, we certainly are. This is the third product in less than two years. Uh, we launched the. Uh, Evoke uh, a little less than two years ago. We launched the truck of the year. Truck North of the American year. Truck of the year. Yes, that's correct. Uh, last year, um, towards the end of last year, we launched a full-size Range Rover, uh, all new. Um, and then now we're here with the Range Rover Sport, just nine months on from that. Yeah. So yes. And the Sport is uh, quite different from the full size. I mean, it's a, it's a comp not completely different, but like there's very very different, like completely different personality looks. Suspension, everything, right? Yeah, there are some commonalities between the two products, but they've really been designed to be two completely different vehicles in terms of their uh, driver feel and what they offer. So the Range Rover is really all about uh, luxury, composure, and comfort. Um, Range Rover Sport has um, certainly is a comfortable vehicle, but it's really designed to be uh, much more agile on road and it's a real you know it's a real uh, option to somebody who might choose a sports car yeah. it really is that good um, I, I saw some of the numbers that, that you guys have come up came up with uh, like uh, for example it compares to some of the most extreme of roading cars and then it compares to some of the fastest uh, sports cars too right yeah exactly um, the the sport has tremendous off-road capability some of the statistics it's uh, suspension articulation is a little over 21 inches which is far exceeds any of the direct competitors and it also uh, i believe exceeds um, products like the, the wrangler uh, but on road it's like as, as fast as a sports car the v8 supercharged uh, vehicle can reach uh, 60 miles an hour in a little under five seconds so yeah. very very quick Uh, can you elaborate a little bit of the engine, the V8, because, I mean, that's the main engine, but you have an addition, so let's go uh, for the big one first. Yes, uh, certainly. The, the V8 supercharged engine is 510 horsepower, 461 foot-pounds of torque, um, and really that engine in this vehicle is a fantastic combination. So the new Sport's lost a lot of weight, so the engine performance is enhanced just primarily because of the weight saving. But, you know, overall performance on road, the agility and all of that comes out as well because of the weight saving. So yeah. we're like 800 pounds, I understand, right? That's correct. 800 pounds over the outgoing Range Rover Sport, uh, the new one is lost. Yes, correct. Yeah. And then like the completely new thing for this vehicle is the V6 engine? Yeah, the V6 engine, uh, strong engine. So what we've been able to do primarily because of the weight saving is we've been able to downsize the engines, make them... Uh, perform better than the outgoing V8 in, the pre in its predecessor, but also 
make dramatic improvements in fuel economy um, and in fact the fuel economy on the V6 is really a strong story on this product it's improved uh, you know almost 30% over the outgoing car so um, very very good performing engine um, and much more fuel uh, yeah. efficient too. We drove the V8 in the morning which is fantastic and you can really feel all that power there and then the V6 I mean even though it's a smaller engine I think it's sufficient for this kind of vehicle because honestly you don't have that many opportunities to really push the V8 to its limits so are you expecting the V6 to be a, a much uh, bigger draw from the, from the V8? Um, we expect the V6 will probably be somewhere in the order of 70 to 80 percent of what we sell. That's the sweet spot for the car. Yeah. Most people, that will be sufficient, as you say. And then we'll sell uh, 20, 30 percent of the V8 supercharged vehicles. Those will really appeal to somebody who wants, you know, a little bit more and certainly more of a sports car type uh, yeah. driving. Which uh, I understand there's a lot of people right? <laughs> like that. Like that. You guys uh, have a kind of a good problem that you have, like, everybody wants your cars are, like, in back order almost, right? Yeah, certainly um, we've struggled to keep up with demand for full-size Range Rover this year. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we've been working hard to improve supply. Um, Range Rover Sport just went, went on sale. There's very strong demand for it. And also we're seeing um, an awful lot of new people to the brand coming in. They've got just an interest in the car, so... That's fantastic for us, uh, every manufacturer, you know, desires to draw new people into the brand, and that's that's what we're doing. Yeah. So great. And um, for this car in particular, you're launching something kind of special, like you have a whole TV show to promote this car. Yeah, uh, interesting creative idea. Uh, we just were really, really keen to tell the world how good this vehicle is, the span of ability. So uh, what we've done is chosen four locations around the U.S. Uh, to run um, a challenge. And the, um, the idea is there are two drivers that go head-to-head -head on the different terrains and in different environments um, to see who, uh, who wins. Um, so um, we, the locations we shot this uh, TV show, and it'll air on Speed TV later in September, but the locations we shot this were uh, Bonneville Salt Flats, a uh, unique environment, um, and then we ran the Mint 400 course just outside Las Vegas, yep. Pikes Peak, and um, Daytona in Florida. So um, all of those are very different locations, and they really showcase the the diverse capabilities of the vehicle. Yeah, the most extreme capabilities, right? Because I mean, this is still a luxury vehicle. And on top of that, it can do all those things. Absolutely, and that's just the, kind of the wonder of Range Rover. It can do all of those things, and it does it with great style and, yeah. and performance. Uh, let's go a little back on general, the general business of the company. You guys have been doing fantastic in the past three, four years, and basically since the sale from Ford to Tata, and that like the company is like soaring. I mean, like. Land Rover and Jaguar too. Like, why? Why is that? What? What has? Ha what happened there? Well, I think there are a couple of things. Certainly, a vote of confidence in Tata in uh, our abilities to uh, design and build, you know, premium luxury vehicles. So, once uh, they were able to see what our capabilities were, they've uh, certainly provided the investment to allow us to do that. We've seen billions of inflow uh, of cash into our business to expand our product ranges and really do the things that we think are important for our products and Tata have really been a great parent they've stood behind us all the way and continue to do so so this is uh, I would say this is the start of it certainly not quite the start because we we've, we've looked behind yeah, no. new products but we expect this to continue for the for the years to come so uh, speaking of that what can you tell us now about the near future I mean are we talking diesel are we talking hybrids hybrids you guys announced something about that uh, in, in Europe, but yeah, uh, what, what's the future for Land Rover in the next few years? In, in Europe, um, yes, we, we are actually just um, launching at the um, Frankfurt Auto Show uh, or announcing to the world that we'll have a, a diesel hybrid on sale uh, later on this year, next year. We have no direct plans to bring that to the U.S. currently, but um, you know the current legislation in the U.S. and just the trends in the industry are going to force us to look at yeah. Uh, introducing technologies like that down the road. So, um, yes, all of the above has been considered. <laughs> exactly. So, well, thank you again. Uh, the sports, uh, the Range Rover Sport is the, the, the most selling the sold car for you guys, right? Yes, it's the single biggest uh, volume seller for ja the Jaguar Land Rover. And it's going to 
keep coming like, like it is. I we mean, hope like, it will stay that way and we hope it will go from strength to strength. Well, thank you very much, Simon, for the opportunity. It was a great day uh, driving Land Rover off-road and off-road. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Pues ese fue Simon Turner, el Product Manager de Land Rover USA, hablando de la nueva Range Rover Sport 2014, que como les decía, tuvimos la oportunidad de manejar por allá en el sur de San Francisco eh, en la carretera o on-road y sobre todo off-road. Eh, es eh, realmente una delicia y muy impresionante ver como una SUV de super lujo como la Range Rover puede no solamente impresionar eh, por su, su lujo, como decía, su diseño exterior, sino la capacidad eh, off-road. Eh, la Range Rover Sport está en cuatro versiones diferentes. Empieza con el motor V6 Supercharged de 340 caballos de fuerza por un precio inicial de $63,495 Luego sigue la versión uh, Range Rover Sport HSE, eh, también con el mismo motor eh, y 340 caballos de fuerza, pero más equipo de, de lujo interiormente, eh, 68,495. Y luego viene la Super Charge con motor V8 de 510 caballos de fuerza, 79,995 dólares. Y la, el top of the line, el Range Rover Sport Autobiography, con Supercharge eh, B8 de 510 caballos de fuerza que llega a los 93.295. Y bueno, ahí tiene toda la información. Vayan a la página de Facebook para que vean y revisen sobre todo los videos porque es realmente impresionante lo que hace. Y ya regresamos aquí en Auto 060 con dos test drives nuevos. Una de la Jeep Cherokee y una de la Can-Am Spider. Una motocicleta de tres ruedas que realmente es impresionante. 